she um, went to Atlantic City March 17th with a male friend from Philadelphia and never returned. But my sister isn't a runaway and my sister just didn't go missing because she felt like it. A beautiful Latin girl full of life went missing March 17th, 2012. Her family and her daughter want answers because everyone close to her won't share any real information. This is a case of Francesca Alvarado. Well, stay woke, baby creepy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Stay woke. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. If you don't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That's where I post my pictures. That's where I'm always at. Now, let me tell y'all, we had 33K on this channel. The last time I spoke to you guys, we were at like what? I think uh, 20K maybe? I don't even remember. Like. My platform has just been growing so much and I just want to say thank y'all so, so much for the love, for the support, for sharing these cases, to getting these cases out there. Thank you, thank you so much. And if you want to bring awareness for black and brown victims, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so you never miss a case. Francesca was a 21 year old from Philadelphia. She came from a very big family and she grew up pretty family oriented. And you know, she was the youngest of eight children. So even though she had a family unit growing up, she never really had a real relationship with her parents growing up. She only just had memories. Her dad was sent away to jail for a life sentence and he later passed away when she was born. And her mother unfortunately passed away when she was only nine years old. So she grew up without her parents' love and that was something that was always missing for her friend. Francesca. But when her mother died, her older sister Christina, at just 20 years old, adopted Francesca and her sister Mia. So I'm sure it was hard on Christina as well as an older sibling to adopt two kids herself because she was so young. She was only 20 years old. So that just shows you how much, you know, Christina loved her sisters and how much they really loved each other. And even though Francesca was in good hands with Christina, she did go through a lot of traumatic things at a very young age. Her and her sister were actually sexually assaulted by a family relative. And it's a sad thing because Francesca and her little sister was so young and already going through so much trauma and heartbreak. So for this person to take advantage of these little girls is very sickening, is very upsetting. And I'm sure Christina felt like, you know, discouraged because she really tried to protect her sister. She tried to do, you know, everything, but you can only do so much. But that situation didn't break Francesca down or Mia. Like they still pushed through. Francesca still managed to live her life the best way she knew how. She grew up with still a smile on her face and attended a charter high school in Philadelphia. And she was a very active teenager. Like she received the nickname Chica, known for her very long flowy black hair, her smile. She just made everyone light up. She was actually very active. She played basketball at school. She loved to be outdoors. And she was also a creative writer. She loved poetry. So as a teenager, she was very, you know, like adventurous and bubbly. She just had such a bright spirit about her. Now, by the time she became 18, Francesca received a great blessing. She found out that she was expecting a baby girl. She was going to be a mom and she did it very well. She was literally devoted to her daughter, Janaya. And like most of us as moms, I'm a mom myself. I'm a young mom. I'm 25. You know, you dedicate your life and your heart to your baby. So Francesca was such a hands-on mother. Like she would create songs and dances 
with Janaya so she can learn her, you know, letters and numbers. And she was also, you know, big on Janaya receiving an education and learning. And as a young mom, she really did the best she could do. So around 2012, Francesca and her daughter was living in an apartment in Philadelphia and also with a roommate, Tanya. So Francesca was pretty much adulting, getting her life on the right track around this time. Like, you know, she was working at a local grocery store and she decided to start college. And she wanted to major in criminal justice at Community College of Philadelphia. So before Francesca started school, she wanted to take a trip to Atlantic City which is in New Jersey. It's pretty much like a mini Vegas. There's casinos, beaches, restaurants, and clubs. So Francesca really wanted to go out and have a good time. You know, she's in her early 20s. She's ready to turn up, have a last hurrah, because school is about to start. And y'all, I can understand why Francesca wanted to go out before she started school. Because, you know, when you start school, like, you're studying, you know, you're on a routine and I did this myself like before I knew I was gonna go away to college I was literally turning up <laughs> the night before like I literally was out until 6 a.m. and when I came back home my mom was literally telling me girl you better hurry up she was packing the car up so I had to rush inside literally coming back home from a party go take a shower go get a cup of coffee and get in the car with my mom so she can drop me off to college. So I understand as, you know, as a young adult, like you want to go turn up, you want to go have fun before you buckle down. And Francesca, she was, she was in that mindset and in that mode. But unfortunately, Francesca would not have the opportunity to enjoy the college life or come back home to her baby girl and her family. On March 17th, 2012, Francesca decided to drop her daughter off to a babysitter's, her friend's house to watch her so that she can go to Atlantic, which is in New Jersey, like I said, with a guy friend, and that, you know, she will pick up her daughter tomorrow, the next day. Now, the friend that Francesca was going out with, his name was Tracy Williams. Now, her family or friends didn't know much about Tracy. They didn't really know if Francesca or him was even in a relationship or if they even, you know, had like a thing going on. They didn't really know who Tracy was. So Francesca says her goodbyes to her baby girl and you know, she lets her family know, hey, I'll be back tomorrow. So March 18th come around and Francesca never arrived back home or to pick up her daughter. But no one really thought too hard about it, even though it was very unlikely for Francesca to make a move like that. They probably just thought, hey, you know, she's out in Atlantic City, she's turning up, she's having a great time. She'll just get to us tomorrow, the next day. But now March 19th comes around and there's still no sign of Francesca. And that's when family members really start to worry. So the family, they reach out to Francesca's roommate, Tanya, to figure out where she is. Like, is she back home? Is she okay? Like, we can't get in contact with her. Tanya is like, no, the last time I saw her, she went out. She was with her guy friend. So Francesca's family, they file a missing persons report and let investigators know that, look, she is missing. This is not like her to not come home and just vanish. She was planning on coming back the next day. Her daughter is here. She would never just up and leave her daughter or, you know, not get in contact with her sisters. So they really knew in their spirit, like something was very wrong. So even though Tanya stated to the family that she didn't know where Francesca was, the Alvarado family is feeling very different. You know, they felt like Tanya knew something. She had information that she didn't want to share with them. Now we're gonna move on to who is Tracy Williams. Now on the internet, there's barely any information on who Tracy is. There, and that's not a real surprise to me. It was actually very frustrating trying to cover this case because you would think they would have something on this man because he was the last person to be with Francesca. The only thing that I really could find was that he was an older man. He was around 40, 50 years old. 
and the family knew that Francesca didn't really have a long relationship or friendship with him. But one thing that really got my attention was that why is a 40, 50 year old man hanging out with a 22 year old? Like it just didn't fit well with me. It didn't, it really didn't add up. So when family members get in contact with Tracy to ask him, hey, you know, where is Francesca? He was the last person to be with her. He tells the family that he literally came back to Philly by himself because Francesca told him she'll find her way back home to Philadelphia. Meanwhile, Philadelphia to Atlantic City is like an hour away. So she wanted to do her own thing. That's what he said. And, you know, to explore the city and pretty much she'll, you know, just get a ride back home. But there's a big disconnect with that story. Like it's not settling right with her family and to me it just didn't make any sense. Francesca planned on spending the night with him at a hotel. She's planned on being there for the whole night to come back the next day and he was her main transportation like she didn't go out there with her own car. She was planning on going there and coming back home with him. So something had to happen within that time frame for her to just want to get up and go. Now there's no real information on the internet either about the night Francesca was last seen on March 17, 2012. Tracy only stated that the only information he had was he last saw her outside the resort's Borgata Hotel. Now the Borgata Hotel is more like a casino and spa resort so it's really unclear if he meant like they were in that area. Like we don't know what happened between those hours from her arriving to Atlantic City and disappearing and it's very unclear what Tracy Williams was actually doing that night. He was very lackluster when it came to participating in sharing any type of information with investigators. Now Atlantic City is a very very busy area and it's not really the safest area at night either. Like there's a lot of activities that go on. It's like a mini Vegas. So a lot of things go on like you know drugs, I illegal things right. So it's not a place that a young girl would be by herself traveling around by herself so for him to leave her there alone it just doesn't feel right especially as an older man now this case started to you know get media attention because her family will post pictures and information about this case on their facebook pages that they had for francesca you know letting everyone know that she's missing we have to find her and they even went to atlantic city to post missing persons flyers atlantic city managers and the corporations wasn't really feeling that idea because they wanted atlantic city to have this family clean image you know they didn't want workers and people finding out that there was a missing person you know a young girl at that missing you know that just vanished you know they didn't want people to feel uncomfortable when they came to atlantic city so atlantic city they decided to take down the missing person's photos and they didn't really participate with trying to find Francesca at all really. Now we all know when it comes to certain cases I cover there's barely any major news on it and with Francesca's case there wasn't much coverage but when there was information out there with the news they shared some information that really made Francesca's family feel very uncomfortable and upset. Some news outlets actually shared information that Francesca was a sex worker. Now, when the family heard this, they were very upset because they felt like that was not the case at all. And it wasn't true. There was literally no hardcore evidence to even prove that was, you know, this case that Francesca was even in that lifestyle and if I'm a family member I would be upset as well because you're stating things that aren't true you didn't come to me about it and you don't have any real information or evidence to back up that statement we can't pick and choose what's right or wrong it doesn't matter 
what you know you choose to do with your life that doesn't mean that your life is less than mine's because you choose to dabble with that lifestyle like what's wrong is wrong and what's right is right so because the news outlets really pushed that narrative out there that really left this case tainted because it left a image on it that wasn't true and when that image is out there that oh she was involved in that type of lifestyle people almost felt like well she brought that upon herself or as eh, it's not that serious but it is serious. Francesca's family over that year really tried to push this case to get attention because no one else really would. Now, as of Tracy Williams, because he was the last person to even see Francesca, investigators wanted to put him on a lie detector test because they felt like they could get more answers from him, you know, just something out of him. And he flat out said no, like he did not want to participate. He did not want to do it. And he actually decided to get an attorney and lawyer up. He was not trying to have it. Ever since that incident, he actually left the Philadelphia area. So in 2013, Francesca's family, they still wasn't trying to lose hope. They still were trying to find any activity on Francesca's bank statements, possible leads, possible suspects. But it won't be until August 2013 that they finally found a piece of information. A fisherman came upon a black Adidas sneaker floating at Corson's Inlet State Park in Ocean City, New Jersey. And when he pulled the shoe out of the water, there was skeletal remains. A foot was inside. Now, when investigators get their hand on this information, they immediately wanted to find out who does this shoe belong to. Now, one night, Francesca's family were watching the news and that's when they actually found out about the human remains found in a shoe. So when Mia was actually watching, she instantly knew that shoe belonged to Francesca. She reaches out to investigators like, this is my sister, this is my sister. So the family is really desperate for answers because they haven't had a lead in so long. So now when investigators begin to do a DNA test, they gather DNA from Francesca's daughter, and at the time she was only four. So they gather her DNA, and after seven weeks, they confirmed it was Francesca Alvarado. And I know when the family found the news, I'm sure they were pretty devastated to now find out that Francesca was murdered. But this actually gave the family some closure. You know, they weren't left in the dark anymore. But they still had questions on why did this happen to Francesca and did someone do this to her? Like, where is the rest of her body? Now, in 2014, Francesca body parts were being discovered. Her tibia and her femur was washed on the shore, but the rest of her body was never found. Her family then was now able to have a solid memorial for Francesca to finally lay her to rest on April 4th, 2016. She was wrapped in purple silk and laid to rest next to her mother. It's been years since anyone has seen Francesca. Her family is still trying to find the truth. The family believes that Tracy and Tanya know more but they're not really being honest. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's really unfortunate that the family has not received justice yet, but they continue to this very day to bring more awareness for this case. That she, you know, we'll, we'll see her. All we want is so that everyone would know, you know, just to put the story out there, because there's somebody out there that knows something Somebody out there knows something, and we even have a reward, you know? So it, we just, we, we don't care about, you know, any, all we care about is getting Francesca back home. I don't really know why my sister's case haven't gotten the attention that we think it deserves. Um, primarily, in my opinion, I think it has to do in the community where she lived at. I think people consider her an inner city individual who probably always, she's just, probably went missing or she's probably a runaway.
but my sister isn't a runaway and my sister just didn't go missing because she felt like it. There wasn't a night where my sister didn't call her baby. There wasn't a day that my sister didn't communicate with one of us, her sisters. I think personally it's because she was, somebody had said she was an escort. And so once you heard escort, I guess some people or even anybody would think, why are we looking for an escort? That's at their own will, which that was wrong. And the news media quickly corrected that. Francesca's daughter, Janaya, who is now 12 or 13 now, she's old enough now to know about her mother's case. And she has shared with her aunt that when she gets older, she's going to find out the real story about her mother. You know, she really wants to figure out what happened to her mom and really bring justice to the family. Francesca's sisters aren't ready to give up on the truth anytime soon and they feel like this can't be the end of her story and I agree as well like this can't be the end of Francesca Alvarado's life like there has to be more the truth has to be there and that's why I'm really pray and hope that this case does get a new lead and this case does really get out there again because it's been way too long so I'm going to go ahead and pray for Francesca's family the family of the victim so that at least they can receive some peace and also this case can be reopened to finally be solved. Father, Lord God, I really pray for the Alvarado family, Lord. I pray that you provide them peace and healing, Lord God. I know that this is still a tough time for the family because they want answers and they want the truth. I really pray for Francesca's daughter, Father God. She spent all these years without her mother, Lord, grieving, you know, really wanting to find out the truth. So I pray that what's in the dark will always come to the light. You know all things. You know the truth, Lord God. And I pray that you bring truth for this family. You reopen this case. You open doors that only you can open, Father Lord God. That what, what was meant to be shut, you open with your power and with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.